Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the panel that everybody expects, the Fanish Inquisition. We are here. This is actually one of the few items at a WesterCon that is written into the WesterCon bylaws. The other one being the business meeting. Uh, under the WesterCon rules, bids for the following year are guaranteed a minimum of 15 minutes of programming time to give such presentations as they cho so choose. Uh, in addition, we will, after dealing with bids uh, for the election taking place at this WesterCon, we will have presentations from the seated WesterCon next year, and after that will be followed by uh, presentations for WorldCons. I'm going to ask that WorldCons limit their presentations to about five minutes, and we will figure out how to do q and I'm rather expecting we'll want to do Q&A for any given year all at the same time. Is there any questions before we proceed? I, uh, I think the obvious we should do seated world cons first and we get there, there to be two of them. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, in that case, first up is the election for the uh, 2016 WesterCon. That election is taking place here at this convention. The site selection table is located pretty much right outside this room. It's the table that has the clear ballot box on it. That election is going on now and will continue through 7 p.m. today. At 7 p.m. site selection voting closes and that is the end of voting. The results will be counted shortly thereafter and uh, they will be announced uh, as people see fit to announce them. They will be uh, formally and officially announced uh, at the business meeting, but there is no rule against people coming out and saying, here's what happened. Indeed, we've done that many times before. There is nothing wrong with telling people who won as soon as the results are counted. There is only one bid that has filed to host the 2016 WesterCon, uh, but as many of you present in this room know, <laughs> the WesterCon election does not have to select what is on the ballot, and it is therefore important that people express their preferences on the ballot. Let's not go there. I'm only dealing with the technical issue. And uh, to give us some uh, talk about uh, the WesterCon bid for Portland in 2016, I have the chairman of the bid here, uh, Leia Rush. And you'll get My name is Leah Rush. I am the bid chair for Portland in 2016. I will be the chair of WesterCon 69, should we be seated. And again, that's very sad. Okay, hi. Did anybody hear anything yes. I just said? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, this amazing woman to my this side <laughs> is Helen Umberger. She is my head of programming, and I can't even begin to describe the amazing things that we've already put together and hope very much to be able to tell you. But we cannot tell you the amazing things we have already done if you don't vote for us and seat us for WesterCon 69. So please vote for us. Uh, hotel. The hotel. Thank you. Okay. We will be, we will, thank you. We have part, right of first refusal for July 1st through the 4th at the Portland by Hilton, Double Tree, Double Tree by Hilton, Portland. It is right across the street from Lloyd Center. It's centrally located in Portland and less than a block from the nearest mass transit stop. That mass transit light rail also goes directly to the airport on the east end and directly to the train station along the west route. So it is gloriously accessible. How far I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. How far to Powell's? <laughs> <laughs> that is an important before we question. Ask, before we go to questions, sorry. I want I, she gets an opportunity to say what she has to say, and then we'll go ahead and take questions. No, no, I'm good. Okay, that's, that's, okay. that's your basis. You ready to ask what? You have, ask, have questions? <laughs> I right. would like to welcome questions. So the first the question is uh, ac accessibility to Powell's bookstore. Accessibility to Powell's. Um, 
Wow. Now, the light rail also goes to Powell, goes close to Powell's. You take light rail into downtown, and then there's streetcar north to Powell's. Are the streetcars accessible? The streetcars yes. are accessible, yes. So, and when you go to Powell's, oh, by the way, anyone that doesn't know what a Powell's is, <laughs> it is the world, we believe that it is now the world's largest new and used bookstore. It literally covers one entire city block, four stories tall, nothing but books. And a coffee store gets formed. So, when you go, take a map. That's the main section of Powell's, but Powell's has specialty stores for, say, just engineering books, which are in their own block somewhere else, or cooking books. They are also at a different location. So that's just the main store downtown. Um, the train station that goes by the hotel, it is Kitty Corner from the corner of the hotel. There are three lines. One line goes directly out to the airport, and the other three lines go to different parts of Portland, and there's maps at each stop. They're very clearly, they look a lot like the London subway with the green, red, and blue line. Um, I believe it's the green line that goes near Powell. Um, also, we want to point out that Oregon has no sales tax. It was always a shock to me when I travel because I'm not used to sales tax of any type. Um, we are also going to be sharing with another convention, not quite like here with the Fantasy Con. Um, it's another nonprofit con. It is a steampunk con. Um, the largest steampunk con up in Seattle collapsed, and now the membership is moving down to ours and they've agreed to share with us. We're gonna get one of their programming staff and we'll do a Steam Con track for them. Um, the hotel we're in normally holds Oricon, so it holds up to uh, 1600 without any issue. It won't be crowded at that level. Um, so we're hoping to have a fairly good attendance between WesterCon and BeerCon. Um, we will be the primary con. WesterCon will be the brand on everything. Um, they've already agreed to that. So, so it's so it's going to be styled like WesterCon featuring GearCon or something like that? Or right. GearCon will be a con within a con. It'll be on the same site. It'll be a track of the programming and have some of their standing um, events. Okay. And then we'll have the regular WesterCon stuff around that. All right. Some questions uh, over here. Uh, what are room rates and what are restaurant situations in the area? Room the rates question. and restaurants. Oh, I'm sorry. You actually you were ahead of me. I tried. I try. I'm not used to people following directions. <laughs> so the room rates will be 124 a night for a single queen. Deluxe rooms that they call the double queens and the king rooms will be 139. I will also add that parking will be five dollars a day if you choose to rent a car or drive for anybody who's local. That's in the hotel's garage. That is in, that's in the parking garage that is directly across the breezeway from the front lobby of the hotel. It's four stories. Parking is not an issue in any form. So the, the restaurant, I make notes. The restaurant situation is that it is, the restaurant situation is that the Double Tree Portland is across the street from Lloyd Center, which is the oldest and one of the largest indoor shopping malls in Oregon. So you have all the things you would expect in a shopping mall, the affordable food. You also have Stanford's. I don't know if you have Stanford's down here. It's a fairly nice steak restaurant. Uh, inside the hotel itself, there is Gather, which is a pub bar kind of an atmosphere. They've got a fireplace. It's very nice. There's also the Multnomah Grill, which is your standard sandwiches, light dinners, that kind of thing. And the coffee bar is very, very good, by the way. Um, it's also Newport Grill, which is seafood. We're also one major street away from Broadway, which has several restaurants on it. And if you get on the train and go downtown, if you want to go to some really high-end restaurants, you just take the train downtown. Um, there's a lot of restaurants down there. Also, food carts are throughout Portland, and there are several locations that are accessible if you want to do food carts. Our last Oricon, we did a food cart tour on public transportation. Um, is it Liz? 
Um, one of our editors took uh, about 30 people on a tour on buses of the various food carts, so that's always an option. Uh, I'm going to ask a question, uh, I, I alluded to it in our introductory remarks here. People may be aware that three years ago there was a Portland bid for WesterCon that was backed by the same back organization, OSFCI, and the voters of WesterCon actually it was, even though it was the only bid on the ballot, voted not to select it. Can you tell us uh, some of the differences between this bid that would make a, a difference? Most of the people, most of the people in this room will know that at the same time that that bid was going on, Aussie was also running renovation, the Worldcon for that year for 2011. 2011. Yeah. Thank you. That meant that our resources were stretched very, very thin. That is not the case now. You, those of you who were here during that bid, during that WesterCon bid, you'll remember that there was only one gentleman here, and he was trying to do it all by himself. I have a bid comp that is, without question, par excellence. Just on the committee that I've already talked to about committing to WesterCon 69, we have over 76 years of accumulated con experience. Helen has been chair of Oricon and involved with many world cons. Elizabeth von Clark, who is her second at um, in programming, has been chair of RustyCon, which is the local convention in central Washington. Pooh, who is also known as Cheryl Hester, my head of operations, has also been chair of Oricon. I myself was chair of WesterCon 35 last year. Oricon. Oricon, thank you. They <laughs> <laughs> blur. They blur. <laughs> of Oricon 35, which took place last November, it grew 24.7% from the last Oricon, and I was able to give a large chunk of money from the proceeds to Oregon Food Bank. It was the most incredible experience I've ever had, and I'd really like to do that same thing for Western Con. Uh, Glenn, I think. So we'll what come is, to you next. What's the fare and travel time along the train between the airport and the it, it, The question is, what is the fare from the train? And all lines pass for the light rail is $2.50 one way. And those that line runs every 15 minutes from about 3 a.m. in the morning until 1 a.m. In, in the morning that night. And the travel time is? Travel time is about 20 minutes. So, is good. How long would a taxi take in comparison? A, ta a taxi. A taxi would probably save you about five minutes, if anything. Okay, yes ma'am. Having had negative experiences with Hilton's and Double Threes in the past, would you please advise your hotel that some of us are allergic to feathers and require foam pillows? I, the question is about talking to the hotel about allergens. Yeah. And I've already spoken to them at least about fragrances. And they do have fragrance-free rooms. And we can certainly, and actually that's good because I'm also hotel for Oricon 36 this year. I will talk to them about feathers. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, uh, just out of curiosity, is the light rail still as it was the last time I was in Portland on the honor system for paying fares? Yes, it is. And I will say that Fairless Square has gone away to great lamentation. But yes, it's, it's exactly like the light rail system here. As a matter of fact, you buy your ticket, you get on the train. Nobody is by definition going to look at it, but if they come talk to you, you really don't want to be caught without a ticket. So. Uh, to put it another way, they, the, the system, the system, the system, here's your transit geek talking. Uh, Portland's light rail uses what's called a proof of payment system. Uh, you are obliged to buy a ticket before you get on board, however, and uh, often that ticket will not be checked. However, there are roving fare inspectors, 
And if a fair inspector, if an official fair inspector asks to see your ticket and you do not have it, you are potentially subject to a rather large fine, far more than many, many rides on free rides on light rail would pay off. It's really in your best interest to go ahead and buy your ticket from the ticket vending machine. If you're flying in, come into the airport near baggage, baggage carousels of Alaska Airlines. It's down at that end of the airport, and it's inside the, the, the terminal is inside the airport. There is no shuttle bus ride to your light rail system. Okay? Yeah. It's about five minutes left if we, if we need it. Any other questions? Okay. If I see any other questions, I'll, rem I'll remind people that you have until 7 o'clock tonight to vote. And uh, do exercise your right to, ca right to cast your votes. And there is a $20 advanced supporting membership fee that translates into a supporting membership in whichever convention wins. And thank you very much.